Hello and welcome to Talking Flutes Bite Size, the shorter podcast which is sandwiched between our usual and longer Talking Flutes podcasts with me, Jean-Paul Wright, and my co-host, Claire Southworth. This week, we're taking a very brief look at the iconic Louis Lott Flute Company and their legacy of excellence and innovation. In this pod, we'll very briefly delve into the fascinating story of the Lot Flute Company, exploring its origins, its contributions to the development of modern flutes, its notable achievements and its enduring legacy in the world of flute manufacturing. The first lot flutes were made in 1855, and over 168 years later, Louis Lot flutes still have a reputation for their exceptional craftsmanship, exquisite tonal quality, and outstanding performance capabilities. The story of the Louis Lot Flute Company begins with its founder, Louis Lot, who was born on May 10, 1824, in Paris. Little is known about his early life and musical background, but it is believed that he learned the art of flute making from his father, Charles Lott, who was also a renowned flute maker at that time. In 1847, when Louis Lott was 23, he and his partner Vincent Godfroy had purchased the exclusive rights to the manufacture in France of Theobald Boehm's new cylinder flute. Unlike other manufacturers of Boehm flutes, including Boehm himself, who introduced many variations, Godfroy and Lott standardised the cylinder flute model. Following the ending of the partnership between Godfroy and Lott in 1854, Lott began to produce flutes bearing his own mark. Although he continued to produce wood flutes, he decided to concentrate on the production of metal cylinder flutes. And by 1860, the Paris Conservatoire, which a mere 20 years earlier had rejected any idea of introducing the Boehm flutes to its students, contracted with Lot, whose flutes had become known for their exceptional craftsmanship and attention to detail. He became their official flute supplier and, as a result, the year 1860 is acknowledged by many to be a turning point in the history of the French school of flute playing. Louis Lot flutes quickly gained international recognition and have over the years become a preferred choice for many professional flute players around the world due to their exceptional playability, tonal characteristics and craftsmanship. They were favoured at the time by renowned flute players including Jean-Pierre Rampel, Marcel Moyes and Philippe Gobert. There are to this day still many leading players, both orchestral and soloists, who love to still play on their Louis Lot flutes. Indeed, my co-host Claire had a beautiful Lot flute, which she purchased at Music College from William Bennett. One of Lot's significant contributions to flute making was the development of the cylindrical bore design, which allowed for a more focused and powerful tone. This innovation greatly improved the playability and versatility of the flute, making it more suitable for a wide range of musical styles and genres. Lot's cylindrical bore design became a hallmark of his flutes and set them apart from other flutes at that time. He was known for his meticulous attention to detail and his relentless pursuit of perfection in flute making. His unwavering commitment to craftsmanship and innovation earned him a reputation as one of the leading flute makers of his time. The Louis Lot Flute Company made significant contributions to the development of modern flutes. In addition to the improved bore design, Louis Lot experimented with different materials, including silver, gold and platinum, which led to the creation of flutes with unique tonal characteristics. His use of precious metals and alloys added to the richness and complexity of his flute sound, setting them apart from other flutes. If we're looking at silver, Lot's flutes were not made out of coin silver, which was 900 parts out of 1,000 nor sterling, which is 925 parts out of a 1,000. Instead, he decided upon 958 silver, which is 958 parts out of a 1,000, known at the time as French silver, also more correctly known nowadays as Britannia silver. This silver derives from a jewellery standard used in England from 1697 to 1719 to discourage the melting of sterling coins for jewellery use. 
Today, Lot's legacy for metal experimentation lives on with many professional flute companies who work with 958 Silver, as well as higher purities, 975, 980, and even higher. Lot also made significant advancements in flute key mechanism design. He introduced improvements to the flute's key work, such as the use of pointed key arms and key cups, which improved the flute's responsiveness and precision. Lott was known for his ability to customise flutes to the individual preferences of his clients. He would meticulously tailor each flute to the specific needs and playing style of the musician, resulting in flutes that were uniquely suited to the player's requirements. The innovations introduced by Louis Lott had a significant influence on the flute-making tradition, both in France and around the world. His board design, key mechanism and innovations and material experimentation really did pave the way for future generations of makers to further refine and develop the modern flute. The flutes produced by the Louis Lott Flute Company are still highly sought after by flute players, collectors and enthusiasts alike. Even today, over a century after the company's heyday, original Louis Lott flutes are prized possessions and cherished by musicians and collectors for their unparalleled quality and historical significance. After Louis Lott retired in 1876, the firm passed through a couple of different hands, but despite the company's eventual decline in the 20th century, the reputation of Louis Lott flutes continues to endure and their legacy lives on. The first wooden flute was made in 1877. However, there are no surviving records of any wood flute production after serial number 4175 was built in 1891. The last metal flute was serial number 10442 and was made in 1951. However, it is the earlier serial numbers which retain their popularity and demand to this day. As I've already said, Louis Lott flutes are highly sought after by flute players and collectors alike, commanding premium prices in that vintage flute market. The old flutes from the late 19th century and even the early 20th century were built to pitches of around A equals 435. So to utilise these beautiful instruments today at modern pitches, they have to be rebuilt, which entails the complicated process of moving the tone holes to accommodate pitch frequencies of A equals 440 or 442. And a huge shout out must go to the brilliant Nick Crabb, who is a fine expert in retuning the earlier lot flutes to bring them up to the modern day pitch. The Louis Lot Company legacy remains a beacon of excellence from a bygone time of great change in flute making. And of course, if you find one in a secondhand shop, Always be wary. Just because it says Louis Lot on the instrument doesn't make it intrinsically very valuable. As we have heard, the flute company went through many owners post the retirement of Lot in 1876. The finest of examples of Louis Lot flutes will usually only come up for resale at specialist flute dealers around the world or at auction. If you see one online for sale, or in the rarest of occasions are lucky enough to find one in an antique shop, it's really important that you do your homework before investing. There are many resources online, including lot serial numbers and their dates of manufacture. You should also utilise the many specialist flute dealers around the world who will be able to give you professional advice and guidance on this famous flute brand. The story of Louis Lot Flutes is therefore one of remarkable achievements outstanding craftsmanship and unwavering commitment to the pursuit of perfection. Whilst the company's contributions to the development of modern flutes will forever be remembered in the annals of flute making history. Talking Flutes and Talking Flutes Extra are podcast productions by the Trevor James Flute Company. For more information, visit trevorjamesflutes.com.